Hi, my name is David Buer. I'm a product manager here at Leviton Manufacturing. Today, we're going to compare and contrast controlling LED fixtures from two different control sources. Now, for our setup today, we're going to be looking at a 7024, which is one of our 7000 series console. Now, it's a very basic console. It offers you uh, 24 channels over two scenes, 24 channels with 24 subs at the bottom, or a 48 channel mode. There's also kind of a hybrid mode where you can actually record 48 channels into the 24 subs. Again, check the instructions in the manual for how to that work. But the point with this console is it's a very basic console giving you channel control, submasters, and a couple of chases. So not a lot of be bells and whistles, but it controls channels really well. The second console we're going to look at is the 8700 series. Now this one we happen to be looking at an 8724 GX. The 8724 in the 8724 means it's got 24 masters. The GX means it's a four universe board. We also have uh, the GL model which is a two universe board and the GS model which is a single universe board. Now, for all of those models, we have a few options available. We have a 24 channel desktop, a four, or excuse me, a 24 master desktop, a 48 master desktop, and in the GS and GX models, we have what you see here, which is a touring model. Now, the touring model just simply has the integrated uh, monitor and comes in a road case, but other than that, it's the same. So, first, connecting to your LED fixtures. Now. Uh, the LED fixtures that we use in the entertainment industry require constant power plus they have a data connection. That data connection is DMX. So how do you get the DMX connect signal from your console to the fixtures? Well there's really a hardwired method and that's what I'm going to show you today but I also wanted to mention that we also have wireless options available. Using our wireless DR DMX or our CRMX system, you can go DMX out of any console into a transmitter and then wirelessly transmit to your light fixtures. Now that's really handy when you don't already have DMX going from your console up to the ceiling or down on the stage where the fixtures would be because you don't have to make that initial jump uh, from the console to the performance area. So wireless at times is a very good option and very easy to set up and deploy. So for this install, we're going to take a 5-pin DMX cable because my console has a 5-pin output. We're going to plug into the back of the console and I'm going to connect the other end here to the 5-pin DMX input. Now we offer several different fixture models. Some of them have 5-pin inputs some of them have three pin inputs and the Pro Color Canon actually has both. Okay, so check that out and make sure you understand whether you're a five pin or a three pin fixture. In the event that you have a three pin fixture, then we make adapters that convert from five pin to three pin so you can, and back, so you can connect any way that you want. Again, just make sure consoles output five pin, fixtures are three or five, and whether you use three or five pin cable in between is up to you. So, with this setup, I've connected my fixture to the console via a uh, short 5-pin cable. And you can see here that I've got red on channel 1, green on channel 2, and blue on channel 3. Now, the reason you see it that way is because first, I've addressed this console using the keypad back here at channel 1. Okay, uh, I could have set it at any DMX channel. If I had set it at channel 12, then it would be 12, 13, and 14. And so you can set the starting address anywhere you want. The second thing you need to know is I've put this fixture in three channel operating mode. In three channel, with this fixture, I get a red, green, and a blue. And you'll see that when you look at the DMX charts in the manual. For the Pro Color Canon, there's also a four channel mode where that fourth channel is dimmer and there's a six channel mode where channels five and six give you advanced function, functions like macro execution, uh, sound input, and lets you control other fixture parameters. Now, because I'm using a 7000 series, I want really simple basic control with as few a channel as possible, so I put it in three channel mode. Now, why not higher channel capacity? Well, or higher, higher channel modes? Well, when I've only got one fixture, that's just fine. If, however, I've got multiple fixtures, 
I've got two choices. I can put all of them on the same channels, meaning the console will always operate them together. Or if I want individual control, I can address them sequentially. So maybe fixture one is one, two, three. Fixture two might be four, five, six. Fixture three, seven, eight, nine, and it goes on. But that again means that it's continuing to take up channels on the console. So uh, that's something that you need to consider. When we move over to the 8700 series, the GX model is a 2048 channel console. So I've got a lot more channels to play with, and over there I might do something like the three, or the, the three, four, or six channel mode. So how does this work? Again, one, channel one's red, two's green, three's blue. If I want to mix those colors, I can certainly take blue plus red and get some magentas. Now you'll notice by moving the channels up and down, I can get all sorts of different combinations of colors. Uh, if I want to take red and add some green into it, I can start getting yellows, I can start getting ambers, or all sorts of combinations of fixtures or colors. And of course, if I run all three channels up, um, I'm going to get various intensities and colors of white. Now on this fixture, I'm using the tri-color RGB package. So that means that each individual LED that you see here has a red, green, and blue inside the optical package. We have other fixtures, uh, like for example, the standard RGB fixture, where you get individual red, green, and blue uh, LEDs. So there's lots of options to look at. So we've pretty much covered operation of the fixture using three sliders. It's really the same regardless of what fixture you're doing. Uh, it's just you know different ways of connecting, different ways of accessing the menus, different ways of addressing. The key point, in three channel mode, it takes up three channels and uh, is going to take up three faders here on the board. Now, let's go look over here at the 8700. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my DMX cable, unplug it from the 7000 series, and come plug it over into the uh, 8700 series console. Okay, so same DMX link, same infrastructure, just a different controller. Over here though, Instead of accessing it with individual channel faders, I'm going to address it as an automated device. So this is going to be fixture one. So I select fixture one. When I pull up fixture one, the attribute encoders, I can see I have one for red, one for green, and one for blue. So when I access those, I'm going to see my red come up, my green come up, my blue come up, and of course, just like on the other console, I can mix them there. So why one over the other? Well, I've already talked about channel capacity. When you have lots of fixtures and you want to address them individually, uh, sometimes you need higher channel capacity fixtures. Like, for example, the Pro Color Strips. The Pro Color Strips uh, have multiple modes. The one I like the best is the 16 channel mode. In 16 channel mode, it divides that strip up into four segments with four channels for each segment. So with five strips, it's going to take up 20 channels. That's a lot to manage on a console like this. Perfectly reasonable if you're going to set it to a color and record it to a sub and that's it. However, if you want to do dynamic things like effects, that's much easier to manage here than it is with a console like this. In fact, there's things I can do on this console that I couldn't dream of being able to do with a product like this. Let me show you one example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use five any color pro strips to create a color chase where my colors are going to go all the way from one fixture all the way through the other. So I'm going to see red move through the fixtures, green move through the fixtures, blue move through the fixtures, and various uh, color mixes in that process. In order to do that, first I'm going to reset everything back to a zero, so I've got a good starting place. I'm going to say fixture 1 through 20. That's going to pull all of the fixtures into the editor. I can see that because they've all gone red here. We're going to go ahead and just set them up at a basic level. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my red, green, and blues, so I've just got something to, that I can see out here in the performance space. I'm going to push the shape button, hit zero for new. It now wants to know what I want to apply the shape to. Well, in this case, I want to apply it to color, so I'm going to pick option three. 
Now it wants to know which shape do I want to apply. Now in order to understand what these shapes are and how they, what the impact of them is and how to apply them, it's best to just spend some time playing with the console and the fixtures. Based on my experience and knowing what effect I want to see, I'm going to pick this first effect which is CMY sine 1 over 3. What that's going to do is it's going to apply a sine wave across the three colors. Now it's, they're calling them CMY here for cyan, magenta, and yellow. Um, it applies equally as well to red, green, and blue. So I'm going to pick shape 12. So now I can see I've got the shape indicator next to my channels. I now have a shape applied to the fixtures. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to push shape, go into the editor. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go into the number field and I'm going to enter 8. What that's going to do is it means now I've got an offset of the sine wave every eight fixtures. So number one and number eight are going to be in the same place all of the time. So I'm actually going to see two reds across my fixtures. First at the beginning, one in the middle. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size so I get a little bit more dramatic effect and then move over here to rate and I'm going to move it up to about 80% uh, so it plays back a little bit faster. Now, check this out and see what it looks like. That's kind of a cool effect, huh? So that kind of thing, very easy and simple to do with an 8700 console. Not so easy to do with a 7000 series console. Whether you need that or not depends on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to set them to a position in a level, 7000 series perfect. If you want to do complicated effects or have lots of channels or fixtures you need individual control over, this might be a better choice. Now Leviton certainly has more choices than just these two consoles, so check out our console selection guides and our website to see everything that's available to you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.